Hello YouTube, Joe here again. I thought this time we would have a little chat about how you do intricate, really fine sanding accurately. All right, for instance, this is my little super glue bottle opener. I decided to make something trick looking because yes, I use it all the time. <laughs> I was screwing around on the table saw, right? Anyway, what you do is you handle your two pieces directly in eye shot so that your eyeball view is always in between the two. So if your sandpaper is at this angle that you're seeing in the camera, you need to have the part you're going to sand at that angle too. And you're literally eyeballing what's flat by having your eye see in between it. And then you're going to take little micro strokes. Now, of course, this is going to be very, very, very fine sandpaper. This says 400, but truly you would be doing something like this in a really high grit, uh, at least a thousand. Because pounds per square inch on that little tiny corner are so high that if you used some, uh, I don't know, 400 or something normal, you'd erase everything that was on there right down to wood almost immediately. So I'll keep that thought in mind. So anyway, that is one way to just do the little edges. And again, it's the same thing here. You, you always have your eye sighting down the flat plane. And you always uh, align the part along with your eyeball down the flat plane with small little strokes. If you use the big strokes, your arm starts to wander and walk and everything starts going to, to heck in a handbasket. So small strokes. Uh, the next thing I wanted to mention is taking your sanding blocks and having them so that all sanding blocks have a perfectly 90 degree side versus bottom. So when you have to do things that are in need of a real perfect edge, it's so easy to do that. Another thing to think about, let's look at the inside of different areas. Now we talked earlier that having an angle on your sanding block in one of my other videos I talked about this how it it's much easier to sand into a corner but how do you sand these little corners and get everything rolled nice and make it all look like a router went over it? Well that's done with really tiny tiny sanding blocks and your fingers must be all the way down to the bottom you're trying to get a low center of gravity with your fingers, as low as it can possibly be. That will give you really good control and good feel as you're doing, let's, let's say, this piece up into here. You would always want to roll your sandpaper. Everything should, should have the natural roll on it if that's what you're looking to do. You wouldn't want to just do small flats if you really wanted a roll on there. You have to literally do what you would like. Same for this inside edge. You would need to sight down it, kind of like the camera is doing now. And you're going to move this in a radial fashion with a whole bunch of movements that are just barely turning the arc, if you will. So real gently, you're going to keep that arc moving in your hand while you're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That way you'll have a nice smooth edge. Another way to do that edge is dead on. Again, you have to have your eye looking in between the sandpaper and your surface to make sure that you're squared up. And then you're going to roll that on that radius as you use it. Okay? It's so hard to do this camera work with something this tiny. Another thing I'd like to show is fillet work. Sometimes you do need a nice radius in here. Maybe you guys are making a little mold. You want to make a mold super fast? Let's say you want a radius that's this size, whatever size you need. Take the fillet tip, give it a light mark on the inside of your radiuses or, or of your corners where you want the radiuses and that'll put a very very fine line where it touched your sidewall 
Then take masking tape and put it from that fine line forward, from this fine line forward. Do the same thing on the bottom. Put that corner in there. Then when you put your goop, whatever it is, bondo, whatever you need to make a fillet, you simply put it into the corner with just no care and strike it off. Peel your tape. You have the absolute perfect corner without doing any secondary work. If your tape is thin enough, it should just take a brush of a piece of sandpaper and you'll totally lose the edge thickness of where the tape was. Virtually no sanding. And that works for, you know, do, filleting the whole inside. Works good to do caulk work that way too for like a tub, tub and tile work in your bathroom. Same game. All right, what can we look at next? I'd say it would be outside radiuses. How do you get that perfect blend that sometimes you need on an outside edge? Again, if your sanding block has a good 90 on it, you can start getting that in place doing this. And never do this, by the way. You're just putting flats on. Always keep that radius going while you're sanding. And do your last little bits last. Don't even touch those till you're all done because that little bit takes so little to sand that off. And if you do it early, you're going to do too much on it. Spend your time where you need the meat taken off. Again, and do the others last. And keep playing the game. If you need a radius perfect, these things are your friends big time. Keep, keep seeing how close you are. You know, if you're good at the top, maybe you're not at the bottom. And play the game. You know, you should be perfectly level if your sandpaper block is level with the table. And you have a right angle here. This should be perfectly smooth all the way up. It should be perfect. These I did by hand. This is just my tray for these little blocks. But this is just to show you how these can be your friend in so many different circumstances, whether you're using the nose. The back edge here is a perfect 90. So you could drag this in here too and do the same thing to put the fillet in. But obviously your fillet would be the other way, right? It's just a very versatile tool. I use these as scrapers because these are hardened. This is a Sterrett version, but uh, they're available pretty cheap offshore. Okay, next, I guess I would say uh, tight sanding corners still have to be done with this system. I don't know of any other way to show you other than you have to have an angle on your block. And if you have to get in really close, you're going to have to put an angle on both sides so that you can literally hold it kind of the way I am now and get all the way in there. You guys let me know what you think. Take care.